accidentally glued to my board. All right, so I'm here under the driver's side and there's lots of space on this side. I got the tank I'm gonna use. It's a two gallon fuel tank I just bought at the tractor supply. And on our van, there's tons of space underneath here. And I'm gonna mount the fuel tank up here. It's gonna sit on a little platform. It's gonna bolt to this frame rail here. And it'll be like a little shelf and I can pull the fuel tank down, wiggle it out to, to fill it, and then push it back up on its shelf and it down with a, a, by a ratchet strap. That's the solution we're gonna start out with. So I need to, um, first of all, start making a bracket that will bolt to the frame. There's a couple existing bolt holes here and there, and I think I'll see if I can utilize those instead of drilling new ones. Andy started out thinking that this would be a wooden bracket underneath or inside the back of the van before deciding neither of those options would work. All right, I'd come up with a slightly different plan to mount the fuel tank thought about it, talked with Gwen, and we really weren't comfortable with it on the inside. So we're gonna take another stab at mounting it on the underside. So to mount this on the other side, the plywood frame I box it, I didn't like it. it was flimsy and the way it would mount would have been weird. So what I decided to do was I'm gonna make a fiberglass like pocket for it. So I'm gonna cover the entire thing in saran wrap and then I'm gonna do probably four layers a fiberglass cloth along this side, the front, partially way down this side here, and of course the back side. And that'll make a nice little nest that perfectly snuggles the tank for it to drop into. I got some leftover epoxy resin um, I want to get used up. I got it clamped to this um, stepladder here, and I got an old towel, crappy old towel underneath of it. So then stuff won't drip down onto it. And first, I start by wrapping it in saran wrap, and then I'm gonna cut a couple of layers of fiberglass cloth to go over it. So this is just to give the um, fiberglass something to adhere to so it doesn't stick to the tank. It's a polypropylene tank, so it probably wouldn't have stuck very well anyway, but I'd much rather not find out. Nicely. And I ordered a bunch of this fiberglass material for boat projects. And I got a ton left over. Ordered like five yards for 50 bucks. So I have quite a bit. And this is 600 gram um, biaxial. So that means that the patterns go like this. And there's one more that goes at 45. So it's super strong and probably crazy overkill for what we're doing. Epoxy. Ten scoops. Get this mixed up. I'm gonna try really hard not to make a mess here. Spoiler alert, he makes a big mess. See if I can pull this thing from its mold. It's been um, a little over 24 hours. It's still like in its green phase. It's pretty cold, cold here in this frozen wasteland of New Hampshire. Man, that 
accidentally glued it to my board. Not only that, but he glued the paintbrush and the towel. What he did part was a bucket for my fuel tank to sit in, and that's what I have. I'm gonna grab my cutters and cut off any excess I can right now. Well, it's still kind of in his green state, and it's kind of workable. We'll let it cure up for another day or two, and we'll um, cut it with probably the jig saw. But this is going to be a nice secure bracket to mount to the frame to hold my fuel tank. All right, so we're out here underneath, the, next to the van. This is the bracket we made, we made the other day. Um, I've done a couple things to it. Drilled some holes in the bottom here, let the water out. We get the water pooling in there. And I drilled a couple more holes to allow me to use hose clamps. And these hose clamps are gonna go around the frame and then cinch this onto the side of the frame. I was originally planning on using um, rib nuts, but I figured I may wanna move the location of this on the frame and rather having to drill a whole bunch of holes in some steel that looks pretty thick, um, I'm gonna do this. So these will go around the frame and then we'll tighten them down. And then the fuel tank sit inside like that. So you can see right here, we got the fuel lines and here's the brake lines. And I'm making sure I run the clamps on the inside of those. tucked in there like that. So the factory tank came with like a hole you would drill in the bottom to um, get the fuel out of it. Then it would come out of the bottom. And that's not gonna work with my bracket. What I'm thinking about doing is taking this piece of fuel tubing that came with the kit in this corner. That way fuel doesn't come out when I'm tipping it up and in. And then that will reach down on the bottom. I'm trying to thinking where, where the best spot would be to put. So I do want to zip tie this extra piece of tubing to the handle so it doesn't like, want to pull out. I'm actually thinking right up here, 5 16 outside diameter. I'm going to find a drill bit one size smaller than that. I'm going to drill a little hole right there. left enough slack in the tubing to be able to take the tank down and fill it. The bungee cord will keep everything in place. With this placement, Andy can remove the tank without having to get underneath the van. In the final step of our diesel heater install, Andy makes a box to cover the heater and finishes the electrical install. Be sure to subscribe to keep up with all of our ongoing projects.